Well, let's all learn how to shade. Let's all learn how to shade. There's no need to be afraid. Let's all learn how to shade. Okay, for this lesson, we're going to start learning how to draw with value and add some shading techniques to the process. Um, for the at-home demonstration and draw alongs, we will need, of course, your sketchbook and your pencils, your woodless drawing pencils. So make sure you have three different grades, the 2B, the 4B, and 6B. And if you remember from the materials video, so the 2B is lighter than the 4B because it's harder and the 4B is lighter than the 6B because the from this is from softest to hardest so 6B is softer than 4B, 4B is softer than 2B so it's much easier to make a, your darkest tone with the 6B alright so before we start drawing things what I'd like you to do in your sketchbook you're just going to draw like just a section like this, just a rectangle, and then divide it into let's see, one, two, three, four, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven's good. Okay. What I want us to do, and I'm going to do one, show you what to do is we're going to do a value scale and this will just help us know how to make different values just with the pencil so before we learn any techniques like using the eraser or using blending tools just knowing that you can make a gradient with just the pencils so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm going from lightest to darkest. So the number one, one, two, three, four, six, seven, is going to be blank, just the white of the paper. So that's going to be the lightest tone. And number seven is going to be the darkest. Now in class, we're going to use your charcoal. So in class, you're going to use your vine charcoal but mostly your compressed charcoal so those are the packs of the um, more rectangular sticks not the round sticks and they're harder um, and we're also using nicer drawing paper that's closer to quality to your sketchbook okay now that I've done this one, which I may go back into to make darker if I need to, but right now I think it's dark enough. I'm going to do, still using my 6B, so this was using my 6B pencil. Can't remember if I said that. So notice I'm going in different directions here. So I'm using the side of the pencil much like you'll be using the side of the charcoal stick in class. So my goal here is to make it just lighter than this. So because I want to have a gradient that goes from darkest to lightest and as equally spaced as possible. So I'm just Basically, I'm just going over it and I'm just adding less pressure than I did with number seven. Okay, that's probably good enough for now. If I need to go back into it, make it darker, I could. Okay, so for number five, let's see, let me, I'm still using the 6B. Probably with number 4 I'll transition to the 4B. So again I want this to be just lighter than this one here. 
So even less pressure. And it's okay if it if it blends into each other or not. You can have it more of a sharper or it can blend in some parts. Okay, so the number four, I think I'll start with number four. So the same thing. You can see some of the lines from a previous drawing demo that I did showing up. That'll happen a lot. if you draw with stacked paper like I did. Okay, so still seeing that switch from darkest to lightest. Um, maybe I'll do one more with the 4B. It'll be very light. I'm barely touching it. I probably could have transitioned to the 2B for this one, but I'll just keep this with the 4B. Because I'm, I'm not even adding pressure, it's just basically just lying on the paper. <laughs> and I'm just letting it go like that. Okay, so 2B. Um, so this is the harder pencil. barely putting any pressure on this and I'm already not really liking like it's too close to this so what I may need to do is darken this a little bit this is I'm using the 4b still yet And of course, it's making it too close to that. So I'm going to darken this. So this may happen where you have to backtrack. A little bit. And I bet I could have gotten one more section. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to add another rectangle and then with my 2B I'm just going to lay it down and just barely touch it's not even I'm not even adding pressure I'm just moving it letting gravity hold it all right okay so that's a pretty good transition um, and you'll be able to even do broader transitions uh, in class with your charcoal. But I think that for now, for the pencil version, this is a good one. So before you do the next lesson where we're drawing stuff, make sure you do this part in your sketchbook. Okay, now we're ready to start drawing things. And so um, what I've done is I just set up some white forms uh, with a light source. So there's a source, like a little clip-on light clamp light that I put to the left side so we have a distinct light area and a dark area and what I've done here is I'm making um, just a quick gesture of the forms so this is basically like what you would do in class like you would first gesture the forms like this and now I want to start shading but first what I want to do is I'm going to start to outline a little bit where the shadows are. So I see a very distinctive shadow shape right here. So I'm just outlining where that shadow is. Now all the other shadows are a little bit softer. Like I don't see the edge as well as this one, but there are some distinctive shadows like a cast shadow with the ball here and of course there's shadows that are already kind of defined by the 
changes in the planes here. Like this plane here is darker than this one, and this one is darker than that one. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I want to analyze and see, um, I could also separate this side here. Like there's shadow on this side and light on there. But of course, there's it's not just shadow and light. There's a lot more subtlety there. OK, so the next thing I want to do is analyze what do I think is the darkest parts to this thing. And what the thing to do, what I, what I like to do to help me differentiate between light and dark is to squint. It kind of simplifies things. And from what I could tell, the, the darkest things on this in this drawing should be basically the lines that define the form that's when it's resting on this platform. And it, it's, it reads as a line, but really what it is is a small little shadow. So I'm just darkening. I'm not going to make it as dark as what it'll end up being because I want to build up to like its ultimate darkness. So I'm not like really bearing down too much. I'm just notating that, okay, these are the darkest parts here. So there, there, and there. And there a little bit too, because there's some of a shadow here. Now the second darkest would be this whole section here. But of course there's subtle changes here. But I'm going to go ahead and start to... put a value throughout this whole thing. And I'm using the side of the pencil. But when I put a value down, I, I kind of like what we did with the cross contour, where you go in the direction of the contour. I like to go in the direction of the plane. So in this case, it was easy to kind of go up and down, because it's going up and down. I could have easily gone this direction, too. And on this plane, I kind of went in this direction to kind of show that it's going out in this direction. So that if there's any linearness to the marks, they're going in the direction that the plane's going. OK, so and then there's this little shadow here. So again, I'll squint. So it's not like I'm squinting the whole time I'm drawing. I'm just squinting just when I want to see that shape of that shadow just more clearly. And again, I may get darker than this in parts, but I'm just sort of defining where that shape is. OK. Now the next darkest area probably, oh, I probably need to also define this plane here being darker than this one. So I'll do that. So I'll use the 4B, and let me define this area here. Now a lot of times what, when I'm in this stage with charcoal is I'm still using the vine charcoal, but eventually I'll transition to the, um, to the compressed. A little bit of a shadow here and that little bit of a shadow here, but it's very subtle. So I'm barely putting any pressure there. Okay. So that just is starting to define the basic tonal structure of everything. It's really basic at this point. Now what I may also want to do is start to define the value around it. So. I don't want to just put value on the forms. I also want to put a value on the space around it because that way the forms will pop up, pop off behind, you know, from the background. So if I look at the background that I have here, I do have a very strong cast shadow on that little piece of paper there. So I'll kind of define that. It's a little bit of a light there. So if I if you notice, if I look at 
the space behind it and this space. This is darker than the background. But if I look at this space here, the ball is actually lighter than the background. So what I'm going to try to do, and I'll just use my 4B, I think, is I'm going to put some value around the ball, like so. It doesn't really matter what direction I'm going because I'm, I could just go up and down. Might be nice contrast with the roundness of the ball. Um, or go in different directions. So what's happening, hopefully you're starting to see how the line that I use to define the contour of the ball is starting to just disappear. And that's what we want. We want that line to kind of just become an edge where it's the difference between what's light and what's dark. Okay, so I'm going to continue this through here but not get too dark because I want this to read lighter than this because that's what I'm seeing in reality. Now, of course, there's this cast shadow here that's darker behind here. And then there was a double shadow here I didn't pick up on, but the, sometimes there's a double cast shadow because there's multiple light sources of the ball here. So looking, so the, the background is definitely darker than this. So define that here. And the background is darker than this, but lighter than this. So right now, they're about the same, but I can darken this to reflect that. So that that's kind of interesting when that happens, when one form can be both darker and lighter than what's behind it in different parts. All right. So hopefully, yeah, you're starting to see things look more three-dimensional. So from there, where do I want to go? Well, let's go back to our darker part. So maybe I'll start to make these a little bit darker because that'll give me more space to draw these other parts with more subtle changes. So I'm going to draw this shadow here. So in a cast shadow, usually up close to the object that's being casted, the shadows cast is, is darker. And then the further away you go, it's going to be a little bit lighter and the edge might be fuzzy. And so the edge gets a little fuzzier. And then again, there's this co continuation of that shadow this direction. And then there was this shadow coming slightly in this direction. But I do notice this should be darker than this. So let me make that a little bit darker. OK, if I need to make that a little bit darker, I can. Um, and then we've got, again, this little sliver of a shadow underneath the box form or the letter form here. And in some parts, it's darker and lighter or whiter because it's, you know, slightly raised in some parts, so that becomes a little bit wider in some parts. So this definitely should be lighter than this. And this I'm probably just going to leave white of the paper because it's most directly showing the light source. I haven't really talked about what is the lightest uh, value and probably this here and maybe part of the ball here so it it's it's somewhat hard to see the difference in the ball but there is some subtle changes here that I'll get to in a little bit now with some planes the value is so close so I definitely want to make this plane slightly darker than that but not so much I'm gonna get out the 2b and I'm going to just 
lightly darken that and make this about the same. Notice I'm going the direction of the plane, right? So I'm going in the direction of the plane and I'll probably do the same for these other parts. Because again, I want to make that the lightest part. I definitely want to keep this lighter than the background. Okay. So kind of what I did here, kind of putting more tone around, keeping these the lightest. Maybe I'll do out here too. So most of your drawing needs to have tone on it. You don't want to have too much just white of the paper. It doesn't look realistic. So if you have too much white of the paper, then that means you just need to darken some of your other tones so that you can have room to darken others. Okay. So for example, I think I'm going to go back into the background here so this starts to separate a little bit more. So I'm going to take my 6B, define that edge a little bit. Now the sphere. So right now it just looks like there's a dark area and there's a light area. And in a simple way that is. But if you look at the sphere and if I squint at it, I see there is some subtle shifting. So I want it to sort of start to blend so that it's lighter on this side because this is where the light is hitting most directly. But then the light is coming back around and then this is the furthest away from the light. So I want this, and I'm kind of going somewhat in the direction of this plane. So it's, it's a ball. So I'll kind of go as the plane shifts. This will be much easier with charcoal because we can, we can blend. We're, I'm kind of letting the pencil just blend itself. So right now I'm just using the 2B, but I may go into it more with, so notice I'm going in this direction here, and then I'll shift to this direction, and I'll go in this direction. So of course I need to darken this back area again because I started to put tone here. So I'll get out the 4B. Now what I'm noticing is what's the darkest part of the ball compared to the background other than here because where it's darker right under it but then right on this edge here it's pretty darn dark and there's a nice clear um, edge there. And I'm going to continue this down a little bit and then it gets dark again. The, there's some light here. So I'm going to talk about what, what's happening. It's very subtle, but we see it in other parts. But what happens with light is light will cascade across a form. And so you get the direct light of the light hitting the form itself from the source of the light, the bulb or whatever. But then you also have light bouncing, hitting other things and bouncing back onto a form. So that's kind of what's happening here a little bit. You don't see it too much here as, as in some, sometimes you see it more, but light is hitting these forms and it's bouncing back onto the other forms, making it lighter. So even right here, this is going to be lighter. If you look at this shadow here, notice how it's darker up here and slightly lighter down here. And again, that's because of that light being reflected back onto a shadow. 
It's even it's darker here a little bit. And up here too, it's darker here, but lighter a little bit down here. So the more changes you have like this, the idea is hopefully it'll start looking more three-dimensional as you go, as you develop it. So again, I'm not blending with my finger or anything. I'm just letting the pencil kind of just do all the work. We'll definitely do blending in class. We'll do some, use our blending tools. We'll use our eraser more. So this plane here needs to be much darker than that. So I actually need to make this darker here. But this plane still needs to be darker than that, so. And some of the edges are kind of blurry. When we're using our eraser, that's going to be much easier to fix. We can use the era eraser to kind of fix the edges, but for now I'm just laying down tone, not worried about edge, edge quality at this point. I could go back into it and later and define these edges a little bit better, and I may do that for the demo. This little dent in the ball here. Maybe I'll try to get that a little bit. So notice I'm constantly going back into over parts I've already drew just so that I can change things. I'm always relating one value to the next. So obviously, since I'm darkening things, I'm not using the 2B. I'm using the 4B or the 6B. I think right now the 6B. So that makes sense. Okay, I was trying to find my little clickable eraser, but I'll just use this kind of fat eraser right here. And I'm just going to bring out any of the highlights a little bit better, um, sharpen any of the edges that I feel like I could sharpen a little bit, like that. Um, not do too much. Can erase this a little bit here. So eraser erasers also blend. So you could do some 
blending a little bit with the eraser. But hopefully overall, again, the lines will start disappearing. There's somewhat of a line there, but these lines will disappear and it'll just be the value. This needs to be darker than that. slightly. Alright, so that's probably enough and we'll do something similar but with charcoal in class.